All right, for today's video, we're gonna bring it to the back. So it's finally time to get to a project I've wanted to do for quite a while, and that is to get a uh, a better onboard air setup, mainly because of the air locker. So in the back, I got an ox locker that uh, still is not hooked up. It's air actuated. Um, I do have a, a Viar uh, portable pump that I've been using for a while to like fill up tires and it's it works pretty well it's a little slow probably takes like three minutes to do each tire so it'd be kind of cool to have a tank and see if we can maybe speed up the process a little bit just see how everything works so uh, yeah right here we have ourselves a two gallon uh, air tank this is the 150 psi version I don't need to go up to 200 and we got some stuff so I got their um, their air fitting kit, and this one is actually made for air lockers. So it's really useful because one of the uh, plugs gets replaced with a, an eighth inch NPT adapter, so that we can run our airline um, adapter to the locker. So that's super useful because two of those uh, they wanted like eleven dollars for just the two adapters, or you could get this whole kit for eleven dollars. So yeah, pretty simple. We also got ourselves a female quick disconnect, so we can hook up hoses and things like that. And, just because I like numbers, I got myself a gauge. So this is a, uh, a liquid field. PSI gauge goes up to 200 PSI. Snazzy, eh? Alright, so the tank here came with some of this. So it looks like some uh, rubber isolating mounting hardware, so that's cool beans. I'm um, still waiting on a couple other things. I had ordered a new fill hose um, because the one that comes with the pump is female on both ends. And uh, obviously we can't have a male on this one unless it had a valve. I don't know how the heck the Schrader valve would work because the female ends don't like activate anything. Uh, so yeah, we have to switch to a different filling style. Um, we also need a new hose as well to... Um, connect the pump to this because like I just said we can't really connect the pump to this with a male so I just um, ordered a, uh, a leader hose like a proper leader hose that would go from the tank to the pump and we'll just take off the um, the male fitting from the pump and connect this so what I'm actually doing is um, I'm gonna run this setup off of my portable tank uh, the portable pump that is a 400 P uh, a or something it's the automatic version and it's one of the fastest filling uh, pumps that they have. The only thing is this is only a 33% duty cycle pump, whereas some of the uh, the other pumps that they have, they they fill less air, but they're 100% duty cycle. So that's something you have to look out for, is uh, d depending on how long you want your pumps to run. For me, I figured the tank is gonna help store air because the locker doesn't take a lot. So I can just fill it up once and then be be good for a while. But yeah, this is the pump that I have here. It's got one of these male do diddlies on there. And this is the yeah, the 400 PA. So yeah, it's got 2.54 CFM at 0 PSI. That is pretty high. There's only a couple other pumps that go a little higher than that. But yeah. I think I'm going to be happy with that. And the cool thing is, since this is the auto version, it already has the uh, the cutoff, uh, the switch for the pressure cutoff. It's got a pressure uh, cutoff switch built into it. So we won't need one on the pump. Uh, so besides finding a spot for the tank to mount, we also have to run a power cable. Um, the amp over here does have a power cable, but I don't know if I want to run both. And eventually I want to get a bigger uh, amp as well, so I actually got a ginormous power cable to go with all this. This fucking monster over here. This was done by uh, the, the Jeep Cables uh, guy. He set me up with some monster cable. I forget what the size is exactly. This is like double, double O or something. Um... One one oh, I guess. I'm not really good on knowing the uh, the super big wire cable sizes, but 
it's big stuff. <laughs> so we're going to have to probably make a new grommet for this because this is so big I don't think we're going to fit it through the stock stuff. But I'm going to run that from the engine bay out up to here so we can get all that hooked up. So yeah, this, this video is going to be a little scattered because uh, I kind of have to get this done by the weekend and I'm not entirely sure exactly how I want to set all this up. So we're kind of just going to go as we go. Oh yeah, uh, I just wanted to mention uh, this two gallon tank has six different ports on it and they are all quarter inch NPT. So that's what I ordered for everything. So I made sure to do a proper count um, to actually get all the right size fittings. Um, so a few things that you guys might not uh, know. For the tanks, you want a drain valve because when you start pumping air and everything, moisture gets inside these tanks and it'll eventually rust them out. So it's really good to have some kind of a uh, valve that you can use to drain the water out of the tanks. So that's what this valve is. You'll mount this to the bottom somewhere. And there is a port on the bottom of each side, I think. Or... No, okay, it's got one on the top, one on the bottom, but... Uh, the other thing is a safety blow-off valve. So this little guy is usually rated a little higher than the working pressure of the tank. So I think this is a, yeah, see this is a 150 PSI rated system. That is for this blow-off valve. And I think the valve is rated for probably 175. Because the, the tanks have a safety factor in them. So this just blows, yeah, this blows at 175. Uh, in case the, the, the tank gets too high. I guess it's just a little check valve thing that unseats and lets the air out safely. So you don't blow your system up. Uh, besides that, yeah, you really just need fittings and everything for whatever you're going to attach, whether it's air hoses or, you know, uh, tire inflation systems, air lockers, things like that. But uh, just make sure that you have the right number of ports for your needs and you got the sizes and the safety stuff. So with this two gallon guy, I made sure to check the length very carefully because I'm thinking about mounting it right here. Now I could have gone probably with the two and a half but I wanted to make sure that I wasn't so long that any fittings were sticking out and I also don't want rear passengers to bump their heads but I don't know I might have been able to fit a two and a half pretty easily. There's still a lot of room in there. Oh well we could always upgrade later. Also don't want to stress out the pump too much, so okay. Now I guess I'm gonna sit here and think long to myself on how we're gonna mount this. Kind of half debating if I just want to pull this near useless factory spare and just put it there instead. So there's already half a bracket <laughs> waiting for us. Okay, so uh, things have taken a bit of a turn. <laughs> so I've decided uh, instead I'm just gonna pull out the uh, the spare tire. So I got this panel taken out. This thing's a stupid little pain in the ass. Uh, I didn't have a whole lot of screws. There's just one at the top and nothing over there, but there's a screw hiding under this thing. So I had to take that whole stupid seat bracket panel out to get to that stupid screw that was behind the other panel. Fuck that. Piece of shit. Anyway, the tank's gonna go here, and uh, I guess the pump's gonna sit somewhere a little lower. So I took the panel off just to see what we're working with here. So we got a nice solid piece of metal we can mount to, make some cool little bracketry. So that's nice. Uh, so yeah, it's gonna sit somewhere. I just gotta fabric cobble some kind of bracket for it. So we have our uh, panel mounted back in here. And I actually got, you know, some wonderful cardboard donated by Viare. Makes a wonderful uh, template for figuring out what the heck we're gonna do here. So uh, yeah, there's just a little, a little right angle sitting under here because this is all flat. But um, this is the basic idea of what we got. So the tank will sit on that. I was trying to figure out what would look nice, whether it would be uh, at an angle or not, but I think the angle kind of looks like shit, especially when you see it outside the vehicle. So what I'll do is I'll raise it up and I'll just have the thing mount farther back because it's still the same amount of distance away from the window. It just looks a lot better when it's level so we're gonna make it look a little bit like that we're gonna make sure that we mount it away from the window a little so if this ever shakes or if something hits the window we don't want this thing to you know either rattle against it or worst case bust it open I might put a little rubber isolator on either end of it just in case any contact ever happens but yeah now that we have this sitting here we can tell we don't need a whole lot more so I'm thinking just a little tiny right angle or a 45 that'll just mount 
a little lower. So we don't even need a gigantic bracket, just, just a real basic tiny thing. And what I'll do is I'll drill through the plastic on this and we'll get a mounting hole. So I think I'm happy with, uh, with that right there. Make sure it's not too close to the passenger's head. So we'll be fine there. And we still got enough room on this end for uh, our fittings and whatnot, so I think... Cutting this thing down to size, removing all the fat. So this is where we're starting to get to. So now all we need to do is make a little right angle piece that'll go down to here. And uh, we should be good. The only thing we got to look for is how we're going to mount this thing down and that we have clearance to get the bolts. This one right here is perfect. That is a perfect spot for a bolt. So we're just going to make that a little longer and use that one on this side. And I guess on this side we'll either um, do something maybe farther out or I don't know. We'll figure something out because we're, we're kind of like different uh, differing heights. So we got to figure out how we're going to connect it all. But I'm probably just going to have one that goes into here. Maybe one that goes into here. And we should be good. Okay. So I think this is starting to really come together now. So we have our bottom support off the hall. Uh, I'm going to use that bolt so I just need to make that mount a little longer. And over here we're just going to go farther out so we can bolt on the outside of that. And I cut some out because I figure we'll make it a little more light up, a little more lightweight, use a little less metal. And then we'll just have one more over here. So it looks like with this design we're only going to have to drill two holes. One for the bottom support and one for the support over there. This one we can use this bolt. <laughs> and then think about using this as a little right angle. So put a little little nut and little bolt. That'll hold it right in there. Tack weld the nut on there or something. That'd be kind of cool. Um, but yeah, I think uh, it's time to stop dicking around with cardboard and start cutting some metal. So otherwise I'm never going to get anything done. Okay, so we've taken our uh, cardboard templates and traced them out onto some metal. So this is some scrap I had laying around. It looks like it's about, I don't know, probably eighth inch. It's just thick enough, I can't cut it with uh, metal shears. So, time for ye old grinder. Let's cut it out. Okay, so all of the metal's been cut, but uh, I cut straight lines like a two-year-old fucking colors in. So we're gonna use a little flap disc action to clean that up, make it look all nice. And we'll start bending. Okay, with ye old vise and a big old sledge. I can bend it, get a nice little right angle out of that. All right, see how she fits. All right, check that out, sewing. So we got the bends in there, and it fits pretty nicely. Cool. So I guess now we just gotta mark for our second bend to fold over at uh, the proper angle so that we can uh, mount to our tank. Cute. Okay, so before I continue uh, with the bends, uh, I'm going to connect the pieces together so that we have a solid, you know, area. Once the, you know, actual tank mounting setup is square and where we want it, uh, I'm going to tack this and weld this together. And then all we got to do is bend this last bend, and I'm hoping to do them both together so that way they have the same angle. Oh man, it's a beautiful thing when the welder wants to work with me. So I turned the voltage down lower than what I had it before. Wire speed was kind of low too. So it didn't actually, uh, it didn't get jammed up too much or any crap like that. It just kind of did what I needed to. The sun was kind of getting into the, um, the mask a little bit. So sometimes it was hard to see what I was doing, but that ain't half bad. For what it's being used for, it's actually pretty good. Cool. Alright, so now I can unbolt it and, uh, I guess do the final bend. So sometimes you gotta get a little creative with uh, how you're gonna bend your brackets. <clears throat> so this is just thick enough, I can't really bend it by hand. And uh, this angle I'm trying to get is uh, rather thin, so it doesn't really fit in the vise or anything else, but this works fine, so just give it a little tappy tap tap. Look at that. Got ourselves an angle. Cool. And just like that, you can make yourself a magic levitating bracket. That's really cool looking. <laughs> cool. So yeah, a little right angle piece, and uh, we should be in the money, Sonny. Beauty. Nice. That thing's really starting to look like something now, huh? Beauty. So I drilled the, the bolt hole for that to fit. 
So now all I gotta do is uh, drill a hole of error and uh, figure out what to bolt down on that side. Now I'll keep that secure. But yeah, it's looking nice. So, looking pretty good now. Got it all kind of bent where I need to. I found a uh, self-tapping screw that I just uh, drilled a pilot hole and I could run that right in there. Seems to be holding fine. So I think we can put the cover on. I got the, uh, the brackets drilled out. So I think uh, we're about ready to bolt up. I put the little rubber grommets in there. They're a pain in the butt. I had to take a flathead and you just have to push as hard as you freaking can on the little sides and you can eventually get it to uh, pop in there. All right, I think it's time to put the cover on. Looky there, not too shabby. So I'm still deciding if I wanna, <coughs> something comforting <laughs> is that the uh, this bracket can perfectly support the, uh, the tank <laughs> without the, um, those uh, support brackets, so that's cool. So basically the main goal of the support brackets is just gonna be to keep the tank from bouncing so it doesn't hit the, the, the window. Again, apparently I just cannot drill for shit. Uh, the first holes kind of worked, but it was too close to the window, and they drilled two more sets, like another set of holes farther forward, but they were all over the place. Measure once, cut thrice, all right, <sighs> whatever. Uh, Anyway, so yeah, I want to see if I can switch one of the self tappers because I only have one that's small. And uh, we'll see what we can work here. The nice thing is you can take one of these little files and uh, wring the holes out until they all freaking fit. <laughs> okay, so that's one part down. So now um, I guess we can bolt that back up. Get to drill in the, uh, the panel over here. Okay, so here's our final setup. We got factory bolt and self tapper. And that'll hide right between here. So the only important thing is just making sure that your uh, your mounted bolts uh, sit lower than those tabs. So what you do is you just pick this up the tiniest bit, and it will pop in there. And then push it down. Look at that, huh? Factory fresh. Baller. Cool. Okay. So one side drilled and self-tapped. And she's holding on there nicely now, so we just got to bolt the uh, the rear sides. Uh, we'll probably have to cut these off a little shorter because they're too long. And I wanted to drop this bracket down a little, so we'll trim a little off that so it sits better. And I still need to figure out what to do with this. Um, I guess I'm going to have to weld a flat piece to it or weld a nut to it so that we can have a bolt run through. But we are at the like 99% mark of having this tank properly mounted, so that's cool. At least it doesn't hit the window anymore. But what about the wall? Okay, so I uh, I set the uh, the nut where it needed to be. Sharpie markered it, then welded it, and now we have to tap it because of course when I welded it I screwed up the threads. So we got Captain Long John over here because the stupid little freaking uh whatever that four jaw thingy just keeps skipping and hopping instead of actually turning. Lovely. Yeah, that's the uh, the anti snap feature. Instead of the um, the tap snapping, the thing just skips. So bad it's too fucking late to actually work. Ay ay ay. Eh? Eh? Not bad. Not bad at all. So now we're much more stable. So once I get those rear bolts in there, oh yeah, she ain't going nowhere. We ain't got no window tappies, baby. Yeah, yeah. Cool. I'm happy with that. I cut all these to length. Uh, quick tip. Before you cut them, make sure to put the nuts on there so that way after you're done, take the nuts off and it'll chase the threads back and you might actually be able to thread them on. Pretty useful. Okay, now, finally, we can finish this and bolt the tank down and worry about fittings and other things, finally. Okay, it's finally done, man. I don't know why that took so freaking long. So it's a little hard to get the bolts on this side. So on this one I put it upside down. On that side I really couldn't. But uh, yeah, I thought I cut the nuts a little short, but they'll do. So there you go. She's uh, she's firm, man. She wiggles a little bit, but that's more the, the rubber isolators. But there's still like basically an entire, like almost hands worth of uh, clearance in there. So, 
you'd really have to hit a bump really hard to do something there. But, you know, we can always put like a rubber isolator between the window and the tank if uh, we're ever worried about anything bad. <sighs> okay, um, I guess now we can look into fittings and other stuff like that, huh? So now it's time for our fittings. And uh, yeah, for you guys that live in California, I feel bad this stuff uh, could give you cancer. Anywhere else you're fine though. So we got the gauge uh, threaded in. For their instructions, they recommend using uh, some kind of thread sealant, not the uh, the Teflon tape, as per their instructions. So, yeah, they don't have to be super, super tight, but they do have to be airtight. So, if, uh, figure out where you're going to put your uh, fittings and screw them in. Okay, so here's our, um, our drain valve. This thing's actually really cool. So the center section actually unscrews to reveal that seal. And that's what uh, lets the air out. So there's a little, like, a hole that goes through the middle. That's pretty neat. Uh, son of a bum. Well, looks like FedEx is trash, and they updated their frickin' delivery date from Thursday to Friday to now Saturday. So, we're not gonna have our leader hose in time for the trip. Cool. Guess we'll have to figure something else out. But anyway, I'm just mocking up where all these fittings are gonna go. So, I need to get a new, um air uh, hose as well because the one I have is double female and normally they're just extension hoses with a male and a female so whatever because these have the Schrader valve that keep the air from flying out unlike the thing that's on the compressor which just flows all the time so here's our blow-off valve you can see the little openings there so when we pull on this it'll actually open up that seat and that's all it does so that's that's um just your little safety release valve. That's right, it's rated at 175 because the tank is set for 150, but it can hold more. That's a safety factor. So if it goes a little over 150, then she uh, she goes bloom. Here's a little drain valve looking good in the neighborhood. So whenever you need to get that moisture out, you just and you're good to go. Okay, um, so here is the one fitting that we're gonna need for the locker. It also comes with a cap and some kind of um, squishy pressure thingy for a hose uh, if you wanted to use vacuum tube for something like this or sorry pressure tube whatever the fuck this is called but yeah they give you those I don't think we're gonna need uh, either of those because of uh, all of our things but uh yeah okay and when you're done you might have something that looks like this so all the fittings are tight everything is on here and um my leader hose isn't here yet, so I can't hook up the pump the way I want to, but we can do it bootleg like this. So we have uh, just an airline that goes to the pump, like so, and uh, if we turn it on, we should get air. Ready? Look at that, it's climbing. Uh, probably be helpful if you could see it, huh? Oh, dude, that's so cool! Ah! We've got air! Oh, man. That is baller. Damn, that actually fills it up a lot faster than I thought it would. That's cool as hell. Bruh. Ah! Okay, so she's pumping. We just got to 110. hundred and twenty. I forget what the shutoff is, but the pump should shut off on its own, so we don't need a, a switch. But if your pump doesn't shut off, if it's just a regular one, then you'll need a cutoff switch. Maybe it's 150? Or... Eh, I don't know. I'll let it go a little longer. But yeah, this is why that safety valve is set for 175, even though the, sank, the safe tank pressure is set for 150, because you, you don't want it to blow right at the, the safe pressure, you know? You want to have a little, little free. Okay, is the tank ever going to shut off? Does it shut off at 150? 
This is a little sketchy. Oh, thank God. Okay, cool. So the tank has an auto shut off at 150. Lordy. All right, cool. Well, now we have air. Are you impressed? <laughs>